joined today in the Orkney Room by Lynn Anderson. Thanks for joining me, Lynn. Thank you for asking me. Um, you were at um, Our Crime last night. You did your author event in the evening. How did that go? Well, I, I thought it was great fun. I hope the audience did. <laughs> well, I certainly did anyway. And um, a, a full house again for uh, an author event, which we thought was just fantastic. And very enthusiastic audience. You know. Yeah, lots yeah. of questions. So. Lots of questions, and we managed to get someone to dress up in a forensic suit. That was a definite highlight. Um, I, I was delighted that you got a volunteer because I thought I was going to end up in the forensic suit. But You would have if we had had a volunteer. I wasn't getting into it. That's why I put a skirt on. Which was, Did you ah, not spot that? <laughs> good planning. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, I, I believe the forensic suit made its first appearance at Bloody Scotland, which was the, the crime festival that you were heavily organised, uh, heavily involved in organising. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, yeah, so, well, Bloody Scotland took uh, place in Stirling mid September. It's been planning for about three and a half years, but uh, it was hugely successful. Wonderful weekend. The aim was to really showcase Scottish crime writing within an international context. Yeah and to sort of do it in three ways, you know, absolutely new and emerging writers, ones that have just been published, and uh, to celebrate the best of Scottish crime writing with the, with the main prize. And the forensic suit appeared because I do a lot of work with uh, Andy Rolf of Return to Scene, which is an Aberdeen-based company that go out and record crime scenes. And we do a sort of interactive uh, event where he brings along the material and the software that you use to record a crime so people see how it really works and we mix the fact and the fiction. So I, I read the fictional yeah. episode out and then we talk about how that would really be dealt with and I asked him to bring a, along a, a, a proper full suit and it's, it's people obviously with CSI and the telly nobody wears a suit but you realise how difficult it is to get into and get out of and and how constricting it is. Yeah, you know, well, to work I, I was it. amazed last night at just how, how much was involved getting everything tied up and on and, I know. and the heat. And <laughs> the, the heat. Uh, they love it, though, if you're working outside because the heat field. is... Yeah, or in a field <laughs> yeah. in Orkney, you know, with the wind blowing. <laughs> you need it to be anyway. It'd be perfect for today. You can put your hood up yeah. in the rain and... Uh, but obviously in very confined situations, you know, you could see that um, it was really, she was really hot inside that suit, yeah. Yeah. So it's not glamorous. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so you're, you're back in Orkney for the, our, our crime festival here, mm -hmm. um, of course this, you've got connections to Orkney anyway, can you tell people that don't know about that what, you, what your connection to Orkney is? Yes, I lived in Orkney. Um, just after, really just after university and teacher training, I did a year in Glasgow and then came up to Orkney and uh, my husband is a civil engineer um, on the housing estate out at Craigiefield yeah. and we stayed in a big caravan <coughs> in Orakirk in Orfer. That's brave. Yes, it <laughs> was well tied down. Uh, Geordie and Vina Perry uh, ran the farm there with very good ties and uh, in fact we were talking last night about uh, they had the caravan tied down, but there was sort of, as the wind got up, you know, we knew when the record player started jumping, we had to turn <laughs> it off, and then when the ornaments started falling off, and then Geordie would knock on the door and say, I think it's time to come into the house now. <laughs> rescue <laughs> he rescue me, because he thought the wind was getting a bit high, but so nothing ever blew away. What would it be like today? It's quite windy out there. Would it be a record jumping? Or I, I, I think it would definitely be the moving of the ornaments. The ornaments. <laughs> yeah, I think the ornaments moving today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so you, your writing career would have came after... How, yeah. lo how long after? When, when did you get into writing? Well, writing? I've been write, really a writer now for about 10 years. I, I taught maths um, in Kirkwall and then I taught maths and computing for a long time. Both I taught out in Africa, but the last 17 years in Edinburgh uh, of my sort of teaching computing and then started to write. I talked for about three years when I was writing and then gave up once really Driftnet and Rona took mm. off and I concentrated totally on the writing then. And was, was that quite a hard decision to make that I am now going to be a writer? Was it? 
It was because, of course, I, you know, I had a, a very steady wage, a yeah. nice wage. I was head of department. There was a security, as my head, as my principal kept telling, warning me about my pension. You know, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, but in fact, it, best thing I ever did because I got to the stage where I couldn't do events because I moved to part time teaching. But I couldn't, you know, on the days it, it just didn't, and I had to really step out and take the plunge. So, fortunately, my family was behind me on that. So and. Uh, I'm really glad I did it, yeah. And you, you're obviously famous for writing the, the Ronan McLeod novels. <coughs> did you do a lot of short stories and stuff to, uh, sort of to, to begin, or how soon after you decided to try writing the, the first Ronan book of you? Well, I started, as most people do, with the sort of literary short stories, and the ESL, the Scottish Literature Department at Glasgow University, they put out a book every year, New Writing Scotland. Yeah. So my first short story was published in there. Right. Uh, um, it was actually a comedy. Uh, it was called Pan Drops, and it didn't have anything to do with murder. And I remember Ian Crichton Smith at the launch of the book came and spoke to me and said, did you write Pan Drops? And I said, yes. And he said, that really made me laugh. And I thought, well, that's it. I don't need to do anything. I can be Dean Christmas. So I worshipped him. Yeah. <laughs> laugh. Job as, done. <laughs> yeah, job done. So I started with And that was very interesting because in that same uh, book, Anne Donovan's first short story was. So right. you writing Scotland through the years. Um, this is the 30th year now, I think. It, and I have a, another short story in this one. Right. So it's sort of. So I started in short stories and then I, I wrote a piece for television. Uh, at the time, STV was running a very good scheme called Newfoundland oh, yeah. uh, with Scottish Screen looking for new writers and I put in a piece which actually was based on a couple of the characters in the third book that became the third book in the Rona right. series. Uh, so I had that made. So I was trying out different ways of writing and then I decided to try a longer story and I had this scenario which became uh, Driftnet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, listening to you speak last night, I always think when I hear you that you seem to have a real, I don't know if affection is the word, but a r real connection to your characters. Do you see a point when you put Rona and Magnus, give them a rest and have a series with other characters, or do you enjoy writing them so much that you, you plan to...? Well, it's interesting this time, the, the, the book that's out at the moment is the eighth book in the series and uh, the series, although each book stands alone, there are threads running through in the characters' lives and, and with book eight I was very conscious, I felt that I'd reached the, you know, this was like a decade and although it wasn't over ten years, it was like an era in someone's life that, so I, there was, there was, some of these threads have been, in fact most of them have been ended with book eight and in fact book eight reflects some of the things that happened at the very beginning when Rona is first yeah. introduced so I saw that it, because what I wanted to do was the next one was to have sort of a, a, a fresh slate to, to start this to start with the characters almost again um, and a I think reboot. A like, reboot. It seems to be the big thing at the it's moment. Right. So. It, it's, a ni it's a nice idea because it, it meant I, I stood away from it uh, for you know some time. Um, and I, I did have other projects that I knew that I needed to start working on. Mm. One, one was the film uh, loosely based on a long short story of mine, Best of British Crime 2011, called Dead Close, which is set in Edinburgh. And it's a sort of sort of paranormal thriller noir right. thing and uh, I was at the stage then of signing a contract to actually write the script so you know I had I had to set time aside because yeah. writing a full film script is the same size really as writing a book yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and when the audience last night was lucky enough to get a, a sneak preview of the new Rona book and yeah. I had, it was just fantastic we really enjoyed that real treat and I wasn't expecting to have such an eruption of laughter as occurred <laughs> <laughs> last night at a, a crime event, so that, that was a bonus. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think, you know, the thing about when people are on the edge of their seat, sometimes you just have to give, they're so tense that you have to give them something that they can just 
laugh at, yeah. you know, because of the, the sort of tension is building up and building up and building yeah. up. Um, that that's something you use often in film, you know, when things have gone really, really, really horribly badly. You have to, and you use that humour in the own of it. And Chrissy sort of supplies that yeah. that moment of light relief where we can all go, <gasps> you know. Um, no, but yeah, that went down very well. I said it was very interesting to read it out because I've never read it out before, and it gives it gives you a sense of what people are going to get from from the yeah. Opening. Well, I was I thought it just completely brought it to life, and then the the gasp that came when they realised that you were stopping at the point you stopped. That, that was that, yeah, that, mm. that was a good plan. I'm expecting as soon as it's published, we're going to have big demand for everybody <laughs> finding out what happened. Well, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so um, that, it's lovely to talk to you again, and uh, you're definitely welcome back at the library any time. Thank you. Well, every time Magnus and I come back, we're very happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you.